only mode. Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Sarah Carr and I'm coordinator for the Coastal Marine Ecosystem Based Management Tools Network, the EBM Tools Network. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. We're very glad you could all be with us today. Um, today we'll be learning more about C-Sketch, um, uh, a tool for this which has tools for decision support and managing public processes. Um, Grace Goldberg will be giving the presentation today. Will McClintock is on but has laryngitis. Um, so Grace, we're very excited to have Grace presenting today and uh, if absolutely necessary we can get some input from Will. Um, but I'm sure Grace can handle all of it. Uh, so let's see. Um, before we get started, before I turn it over to Grace, um, I wanted to let you guys know how to ask questions. So um, the easiest way to ask questions is by typing the questions into the question panel of the user interface. Um, then the, I as moderator will uh, see that question and relay it to Grace. Um, and I'll save substantive questions for the in for the question and answer uh, session portion of the webinar, which will be after the main presentation. Um, and, but if it's, a, it's just a quick clarifying question, I might go ahead and ask Grace during the presentation and the demo. Um, and also before we go, I wanted to introduce my co-host, which is Nick Weiner. He's with Open Channels. Um, NatureServe is uh, co-coordinated or sorry, EBM Tools Network is co-coordinated by NatureServe and OpenChannels.org, and so we're also very glad Nick is on today. Uh, okay, Grace, I will uh, turn it over to you, and um, and just as a reminder to everyone, go ahead and send in questions whenever. Um, we'll hold the substantive ones till the end, and clarifying ones we can we can tackle during the presentation and demo. Okay, Grace, all you. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Nick. And thanks, everyone, uh, for joining. Those of you, um, it looks like, still logging on, too. <clears throat> I am Grace Goldberg. I work in the McClintock Lab at UC Santa Barbara's Marine Science Institute, helping implement C-Sketch and other software tools our lab develops for sustainable marine resource management. Today, I'm going to give an, uh, enough of a C-Sketch intro for those of you who aren't already familiar um, to get acquainted. Uh, but also highlight some new features that I'm pretty excited about that you might not have seen if you haven't heard from us in the last six months. And um, really focus on what using this tool in marine spatial planning process looks like. Uh, hopefully leaving plenty of time um, for questions. And yeah, feel free. Um, I guess, Sarah, you'll just interrupt me if you see uh, questions come Correct. in. Is that yeah. all right? Great. Correct. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, great. So C-Sketch is a web-based mapping platform that supports science-based, data-driven, but participatory marine spatial planning process. We've been um, implementing C-Sketch in, did my slide switch? Yes? It, it did, yes. Awesome. Yep. Um, we've been using C-Sketch in a variety of types of marine planning initiatives globally for the last five years now, which has allowed us to uh, improve the tool and um, with input from all of those users and really expand how C-Sketch is being used for different marine planning contexts. The core of C-Sketch are the sketching and analysis tools you'll learn about um, uh, and I'll demo for you. Uh, that focus on supporting a geodesign workflow, iterative, um, sketching, informally expressing yourself on the map, getting science-based feedback, working with other folks, and coming to uh, an agreeable, uh, optimal solution. And uh, it's a software service, which means it's a single web-based application that can support an unlimited number, uh, technically, of, of uh, customizable, uniquely configured projects at their own unique URL. And I'll show you more of that. We have uh, right now actually more than 290 active projects globally. Um, and the interface has been translated uh, from English into Spanish and Bahasa Indonesia for specific projects. And we're excited about adding more languages uh, if it's relevant to specific projects you might want to launch. So before I dive into demo, I want to um, talk for a moment about when might you use C-Sketch. If you think 
that your process needs a web viewer or a central online space for all of your maps, like a data portal, uh, C-Sketch has those features. It also has those sketching uh, and analysis tools that I mentioned. And it also is a place, it becomes um, the home for remote collaboration in discussion forums. Uh, for housing conversations around data vetting or those iterative planning discussions and the geodesign process um, that you'll see more of. We also use it in person in facilitated interviews and up on a screen in meetings to, and recording spatial meeting notes um, at important parts in the, of at important steps along the marine spatial planning process. And then it also includes a survey tool to allow you to collect new spatial data sets in addition to just folks' ideas about spatial planning. And that maps onto all of those different pieces of functionality map onto kind of three things that you're about to see in the demo. They're broken up into the data layers, the My Plans and Participate tabs. Um, so I'm gonna dive in. So when you go to um, csketch.org, you can get more information um, generally and hit projects and, and navigate to a project or go from that um, unique URL. So there's that map of, of uh, really hundreds and dozens of, of real planning initiatives using csketch. See, I'm going to use the, the Montserrat project to demo the interface. Uh, when you come to a C-Sketch project, you first have this about window. It's an opportunity for um, to share a little bit about the purpose of the project and maybe link out to other information. I am logged in and I have administrative uh, permissions on this project, which means I have a little button where I can edit it. And there'll be a couple other times in the demo that I'll flag. This is something I can see because I'm an admin user. So once I X out of that about window, I can see, um, I like to think of kind of four main parts of C-Sketch. On the left here, we have the map viewer, and then on the right, those three tabs, data layers, my plans, and participate. We're really excited about this project um, ongoing with the Weight Institute's Blue Halo Initiative. Just two weeks ago, Will and our uh, senior developer, Todd Bryan, spent a week on the ground um, with a steering committee uh, capturing their first uh, informal ideas and following up in meetings, sketching lots of new plans. Um, I won't be able to show you any of what they created because it's not public until a subsequent meeting in a couple of weeks. Um, but this is an, uh, a good example of ongoing process. And also pieces of this platform have shifted since those meetings already, and we continue to configure it and adapt it as the process changes. So uh, on the web viewer side, we have um, typical panning, zooming, and map tools. So I can pull up a search for a location bar. I can bookmark this map to create a link that shows the exact, so I can share the exact extent and what data was pulled up um, on my current map. And also options for printing and exporting with a variety of formats and layout options. In the data layers tab, uh, I can search for layers, and we've organized this in a way that's specifically relevant to how uh, the Monster Blue Halo Initiative is using this project for ocean zoning, what information they need to have at their fingertips. So this data layers tab looks different and is organized um, with headings and folders and looks different for um, all of the different C-Sketch projects, which pull in map services relevant to informing their specific work. Uh, the, we have the standard Esri base maps, and then you can also add uh, custom base maps or turn off base maps if you'd like to simplify the options for users. And then um, for data, I'll just pull up the benthic habitat and observations of IUC and listed coral, which are relevant for this process. Um, if I go to legend and ordering, I can adjust transparency, switch the, or the draw order of layers, um, link out to uh, metadata and um, see, see those legends. Okay, so 
I'm going to jump to, now jump to that My Plans tab. This is where um, sketching and analysis takes place. And this is um, my private sandbox. So these are all uh, zones that either I've created or I've copied um, from discussion forums where other folks have shared them. And the process of sketching looks like this. So I have, um, I would decide I want to create a new zone. I'm going to click, 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 and then double click to finish on the map. This is linked up to a, a clipping pre-processing service. I'm asked to name my zone. I am not sketching this on behalf of another user. And I think that this should be a partial take marine reserve. I have a bunch of different options for the different zone types that are relevant to this planning process here. And if I select a partial take marine reserve, that triggers another question asking me about what types of activities. Well, this is a place I love to go spear fishing. So I think although maybe other types of fishing should be banned, I would really, I, I think this should be a kind of a spear fishing marine reserve. Um, opportunities to create more notes. And then all of these questions I've answered are now attributes that will be associated with this polygon I've created on the map. Um, I'll show you quickly too if that if I realize that wasn't quite the boundary that I hope to capture, um, I can click to edit, get extra vertices, um, and then click again to save. So I'm going to save that plan, and as soon as and as soon as I've saved it, it's available to be analyzed with the analytical reports in CSketch. I'm going to just focus on the environment tab. Um, so these analytical tools are um, the one part of CSketch that's not an out of the box feature. So um, usually, you'll be working with our geospatial developer to add these to a project. Um, that's because they look really different and are tailored to the specific planning process. So um, the right type of analytical feedback to let you know that your partial take marine reserve is going to meet or not meet science guidelines in Montserrat look really different than, say, the, the analytical feedback relevant to the conservation planning projects in the South Island of New Zealand where we're working, or those um, that were used in the map process in British Columbia also to do, even though they're all uh, conservation, um, conservation zones that you're analyzing. So uh, what I learned from this is this zone alone is not going to meet my habitat protection goals. And it hasn't overlapped with very many observations of IUCN listed coral, um, which we thought was, um, which we're, we think is probably important to, to protect some of those. Um, and I can just pull up that relevant layer to see and maybe guide subsequent editing of that zone or how I design a full network to meet those goals. So speaking of a full network, I can actually take a look at, as I can, uh, right click and put this in a, in a collection or a folder that I've created. And just to show you, um, I can then analyze that complete collection also of zones to understand how um, a full zoning plan would meet science guidelines or the consequences of putting that zoning plan there. So uh, I definitely overlap with some more of those IUCN listed coral observations. Um, and this is broken up to show me uh, for some things that are marine reserves and also overlap that's from non-marine reserves. So I can make uh, judgments about that. Let's see, what else can we do? Um, so now I think I'm ready to share my zone. Or maybe I want to take a look at what other folks have been, have been posting after, in meetings, after meetings, um, in the interim. So I'm going to jump into the Participate tab now. And be, as I mentioned, a lot of this is uh, still not public, so I'm going to just go to a demonstration forum. Let's see, Will kicked off this forum with a conversation about some zones that he had sketched. 
He's also annotated the map with a drawing and I can click to see the data he was viewing at the time. Uh, I'm just going to recenter a little bit there. Nice. And I can respond with, um, with text and attaching my ideas. I can copy those to my My Plans tab, edit them, and post them back to the forums um, and view the analytics um, right, from, right from those forums as well. Let's see. This is what it looks like to respond with text, attaching plans. I can attach other additional files, um, that annotating on the map. And then I want to highlight, um, this is one of the exciting new features that I want to highlight. You might notice this little, um, this little link. There are 192 other sketches nearby. And let me take a look at what that's referring to. I posted uh, a set of two zones that are pretty big. Maybe that's why it's so many. Um, these are a little smaller. I only have 160 other sketches nearby. But this is new. This is adjacency reporting. So when I post to a forum, I'm really forced to uh, see and think about coordinating with other folks who have um, posted plans that are overlapping or adjacent to uh, where I'm working in areas that I'm interested in, given where I've posted zones. So. Um, I, when I click this, I can pull up a list of all 160 zones that have been posted to the forum that I have access to, uh, who posted them, and actually a link to go see those. And maybe I want to respond in that conversation if it's in a different discussion thread. Okay, so for those keeping score at home, you have seen uh, the Map Viewer, the Data Layers tab, My Plans, sketching and analysis, the discussion forums, and so two last things I want to hit are the survey tool and uh, the administrative dashboard where you can configure the project. So under that participate tab, we have the full list of forums, and then below it, the list of surveys accessible. So I am logged in as an administrative user. That means I can see all of the forums and all of the surveys, including those which are inactive. If you folks create an account, go to monsterout.csketch.org, you'll only be able to see the, um, or go without logging in actually, you'll only be able to see the uh, publicly available forums and uh, the active survey if it's a survey that's open to the public. So what's that experience like um, with this spatial survey tool? It's a survey set adjacent to a map, which is pretty unique. We have, um, and you can send folks to a direct URL so that this, what I'm showing now, is the screen they arrive at rather than having to navigate through the whole platform if really what you'd like them to do is just respond to the survey. So I'm going to uh, take the survey. I am um, not answering for someone else. I do not vote. Um, but if I say that I fish, additional questions uh, are um, appear. I'm asked to add a zone. Let's see, I, as I mentioned before, love to spearfish over there and can have other comments. Those same editing tools are available. Save and continue. And then I also want to make sure they know that, you know, sometimes I like to go just off the port. Um, but that's more just hook and line fishing with my family sometimes. Let's see. And now that I've contributed multiple zones, I'm asked to assign points out of 100. This mimics something called the 100 pennies exercise that's done with um, fishers and other ocean user groups to create a surface of fishing value in this case. Um, and we've also done it with dive value with the rest of the survey. So, I think my spearfishing areas, I, I value that much more highly than the area around the port. No, I do not dive. And then I can submit, or if I'm logged in, save a draft. Um, what's pretty cool about this, because I'm an admin user, I can see the full list of responses and pull them up on the map. 
So that's all of the fishing zones, dive spots, and um, other types of zones like suggested areas where maybe a mooring and anchorage zone would be helpful that folks contributed through this uh, survey process that came um, as a lead up to the marine planning process in Montserrat. And then what um, we did to then inform the marine planning process was download the responses and generate these heat maps. All right, let me turn that off. These heat maps of fishing value and of dive value summarized across all of the respondents. Um, summarized across all of the respondents and now actually integrated into those sketching and analysis tools as well. Okay, so how do you a uh, quick look into the administrative dashboard where you can configure and customize the C-Sketch project? If you are leading marine planning or helping to implement C-Sketch, you'll probably get administrative permissions and you'll have this little admin link in the top left. This is where I can add users and organize them into groups with different privacy permissions. So maybe some data layers will be locked down to specific groups, the discussion forums, um, some, some of those are, are private to specific user groups. This is where I can add data, organize it with folders and headings, add custom metadata documents, um, and, and configure pop-ups and kind of curate the whole data exploration experience. I can create forums and manage permissions. I can create new um, sketch classes. Let's see. So maybe folks maybe folks want to be able to sketch points as well as polygons and the putting polygons in collections. So I'm going to save that sketch class. And then I can build an attribute form from this form builder asking questions about the point they've contributed that'll be, that'll be saved as attributes. Adjust symbology, add those geoprocessing services as well. And that's the same form builder that you have if you're interested in generating surveys. So I can add, um, I'll just take a look at this one that we, that we were just looking at. This is where I can manage permissions. Um, configure a custom intro and thank you message. And then you can see that those um, questions that are hidden based on your responses to just a few questions that show up initially. And um, I can add, add additional form fields there. The new feature for administrative users that I want to highlight is this analytics tab. We've had use metrics in C-Sketch for a while, and these help uh, project admins track um, how the project is being used over time and also what users are we engaging effectively and are there other folks where we that aren't getting engaged where we need to improve outreach. So I can see a heat map of the centroids of sketches that have been contributed and this is helpful because it includes uh, sketches that haven't necessarily been shared so you can get a little inside peek at what areas of the island might be especially important or contentious. Um, where people are proposing zones and, and filter that map based on time and um, the type of sketch as well. And then we've got, I'm going to zoom past the user information, but uh, forum messages, um, projects, project visits, sketches and survey responses, new user signups all over time. Um, and this is uh, leveraging a uh, a data visualization product called Periscope that we've integrated, which means it's uh, really efficient for us to update how data are being pulled and customize these uh, visualizations per project. If there's specific questions you have in your process and you want to keep track of, um, maybe you have some metrics for success with how outreach and engagement are going, um, we can build those in and uh, build in kind of custom drill downs for these as well. All right. So a couple of other notes that I want to hit. Hopefully through that demo, I've given a pretty good run through of 
a pretty good run through of what it looks like to use C-Sketch in process with the Montserrat example. Um, there's a, a, a whole slew of different contexts and photos captured up here. You know, that we supported the Marine Shipping Working Group here with Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary, and they um, use C-Sketch in uh, webinars, in people had it up during phone calls in between meetings, and then it, it was that really useful tool to have up to pull up data in those in-person meetings at critical points along the process. Um, and then let people express themselves from the laptop where they're seated or um, pointing at the map and getting up and walking around next to the, pro the projector screen uh, and kind of keep all of those negotiations and conversations based in the data and, and real locations. Um, a couple of, another thing I want to flag is um, one thing that we, we help people grapple with all the time is thinking about like what we're about to do marine planning or we're already kicking off marine spatial planning. What tools should we be using to meet our specific process needs? And as you've seen, C-Sketch has a variety of different tools within the platform that can be used in, you can use all of them or some combination and which ones are important change throughout the life of a process as well. Um, and a lot of folks are using other, in addition to the C-Sketch analytics built in, we're integrating other decision support tools that you might be familiar with. Um, the one that's not on this slide also is uh, Zonation. Our colleagues at the Department of Conservation in New Zealand um, use Zonation modeling extensively and then bring those output maps into C-Sketch to make them accessible to a broader audience and bring them into the process. So if you are right on the edge of your seat and wondering how do we start, you email me for a free demo project. Let me know where you're working in a little bit of context. You'll get administrative privileges and then you can um, start configuring your project and we can see if, if it's the right tool for you. Um, we are, as I mentioned at the beginning, a lab in um, at the University of California, Santa Barbara and the UC licenses C-Sketch. So if you want to use it, it's $1,000 a year for the license fee, which can be waived for education and academic use. Um, and then other costs associated with implementing C-Sketch have to do with paying for our lab, lab's time, essentially. So that's user support, developing those custom analytics, collaborating with, with um, scientists you're working with or your planning team, um, and also implementation support. We've been using C-Sketch in a public process in a variety of contexts for five years now. Um, Will and our lead developer, Chad, uh, supported the Marine Life Protection Act initiative process. So they're, they've got 15 years um, of planning experience under their belts. And um, that's sometimes really useful. And the extra capacity and process planning, not just thinking about the tech, uh, is, is something we really enjoy partnering with people on. So with that, I want to say thank you um, for uh, sitting through that whole spiel, and I can get C-Sketch back up on the screen to demo if that'll help answer any of your questions. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Grace. This was great. Uh, and just as a reminder to everyone, you can ask questions by typing them into the question panel of the user interface. Um, okay. We just have a couple questions right now. Uh, so go ahead and send your questions in now. Uh, you were very thorough. Well, no, not, I know there's so much more functionality, but uh, <laughs> you did a good job explaining it anyway. Um, okay, so question. Uh, can ArcMap layers be uploaded into the system, and how does it deal with various projections, um, i.e., can externally derived data be incorporated, or does it need to be recreated within the system? That's a great question. So. Um, for the, so C-Sketch is your visualizing map services. So what you'll do is you'll prepare the maps that you want to see in um, ArcMap, and then um, you'll need them to be, you'll reproject into um, a WGS 1984 Web Mercator and publish them to, as a map service, there's like a, a little share as map service. Um, link. And a lot of organizations we work with are publishing their own, they're managing their own servers and they're, pu they're publishing services already. Um, if you're not, 
we often, we can spin up a server on our own cloud deployment um, and kind of pass our Amazon bill to you and then, um, and help you kind of learn how to do that. So that, that's the answer on visualizing data. But then to be a part of those analytical tools, we, we grab a second um, hard copy of the data from you uh, to publish with a Python script. And that one will be in whatever the appropriate local projection is um, because that's relevant for the analysis. But to do the web visualization, it's all in Web Mercator. OK, thank you. And um, question about can you export the sketches to ArcMap? Can you go the other direction? Yeah. So um, we do have export as a shapefile for the sketches um, and then also for like all of the survey responses. Um, and you can do that straight from the forum or, or export something that you've created in my plans. Okay, great. All right, uh, on to some other questions. Um, so one of the questions I have is related to user friendliness in the field. Can this be placed on a tablet and used outside of internet range? So, that's a great question too. Um, I rate C-Sketch very highly on user friendliness in the field. Some folks are using it on a tablet, but we don't actually test it on a tablet or support it. So we recommend taking a laptop into the field and that's what we do. Um, C-Sketch is a web-based tool, so you have to be able to load it in a web browser to use it. We're working in um, really remote locations sometimes. Um, in the project in the Galapagos, they did a lot of uh, interviews with fishers and went to um, fishing cooperatives on, on, a, on a lot of different islands in the archipelago and only came to one where they weren't able to use C-Sketch in the, in the workshop. Um, and they had, they had maps for backup and for just as communication tools, uh, paper maps anyway, um, so that they, they were prepared and that worked really well. So when we're working in, in these small islands in the Caribbean, we're um, putting uh, we have a, a smartphone that, that with a Wi-Fi hotspot, um, so we're using basically cellular data to run C-Sketch. Um, the other note about connectivity, which is important, is um, C-Sketch, uh, most of the bandwidth that it takes is just to load the application. So when I first type in monsterop.csketch.org and the application loads for the, uh, and opens in my browser, Sometimes that can slow down. Maybe that'll take a little longer, but the interactivity um, doesn't, most of that doesn't need to communicate back with the server. So on a pretty slow connection, your actual user experience won't necessarily slow down. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Um, for participants in sur slash surveys, can individuals be kept anonymous? Yes. You, um, and th those are all settings you can set for the survey. So um, uh, it can be a survey that you don't have to uh, create an account and log in to take. You can um, make people, um, yeah, exactly. Um, what's kind of nice if you do make people log in is you can track invites. Um, so I can send it to a specific group of folks I'm trying to engage and then see who's actually responded and send them reminder emails automatically. Um, so I kind of on either end of how you want to manage the survey, there's a lot of um, provisions and settings for that in the admin dashboard. Okay, great. All right, now we have lots of questions, so this is good, but keep them coming. Awesome. Uh, we have lots of time. Okay, is there a function for some projects to be open to the public slash stakeholders for free? Yes. Oh, that's a great question because um, that clarifies what that license fee is. Your end users will not pay anything to use C-Sketch. Um, the license to use C-Sketch is to create that C-Sketch site at a custom URL, um, and it's for an unlimited amount of use of that site for an unlimited number of users. So um, most people have no idea that C-Sketch costs money who are using it. It's just the administrators who said, we need to bring this into our process, who are dealing with licensing. Okay, great. And also on the topic of uh, costs, can you elaborate a little bit more on the amount of support that is commonly required to get a project up and running and how that affects user license costs? Yes. So the, um, the support costs, so in addition to kind of including the 1,000 
um, 1,000 a year license and sometimes um, some server infrastructure. We, we usually say it's about $10,000 a year to use C-Sketch if you have kind of a basic level of user support, maybe even some simple analytics, maybe we're doing webinar trainings uh, for your staff and, and helping think about implementation to get up and running. Um, other projects where we're, we're maybe building some custom features, we're coming and doing it on the ground training, that's maybe twenty or 30000 in the first year to get everything up and running, and then um, 10000 after that. And, you know, some projects kind of drift, uh, <laughs> sunset, and, and um, we're, we can figure out how to make it all affordable. Um, but a lot of projects end up being... Um, uh, then there's other projects that are more in the order of uh, sixty or a hundred thousand dollars a year because we're building a lot of um, cool new features and improving the interface. And you know, our, our partners at the Department of Conservation in New Zealand asked for the survey tool a few years ago, and then have. Um, invested in improving that survey tool user interface and because they've been able, they had survey projects that they needed to get done and they were implementing C-Sketch already, um, you know, they were able to invest in that and that's now a feature out of the box for anyone using C-Sketch. Cool. All right. Uh, thanks, Grace. Um, and then speaking of, um, of uh, processes evolving, so if a spatial planning effort is well underway, how difficult might it be to shift the project to utilizing the C-Sketch tool? That's a great question. So um, I, I think it's, it's um, probably really easy, and whoever asked that, I'd love to, to chat with you about it, the specifics of your project in more detail, so please follow up with me. Um, if you have already been like a lot of the heavy weight of getting up and running is stuff you've probably already done. You've probably pulled a lot of the important data together and decided how to visualize it. Maybe you've even published it as map services, and those can all just be ingested into C-Sketch if you were using um, another portal that you're not satisfied with, or you want to make sure that in addition to having that data viewer, um, you can also pull those map services right across um, it's, it's literally as easy as copying and pasting the, the link um, of the server where the data is sitting into C-Sketch. So from a technical perspective, I think it's very, very do doable to add C-Sketch into the mix and change course. Um, and it, it also, that also depends on how you're interested in implementing it. So if you're... Um, you know, if you've done a lot of engagement and you have some specific folks that you want to sit down for a training and get them up to speed, that's great. If you want to have it on a projector and guiding conversation and you think that sending people a link and maybe a, a screencast video of how to sketch, um, I think it's it's totally feasible that they won't require any kind of in-person training and maybe we'll do, we'll do some follow-up web, optional webinar training stuff, so. Okay. Uh... Okay, let's see. Lots of good questions. Um, do you have any papers out there that have documented how this participatory process has worked in the past, or a user guide of some sort? Um, yes, I have a, a range of materials that um, touch different points of that. We haven't been um, publishing process-related papers um, academic, like in academic publications. I have, um, let's see. We have a, a training. Oh, there, there are a couple of marine map ones. Would you consider those relevant? Yes. Yes. Okay. So kind of okay. from a participatory process, marine map is a, the, the web mapping platform that C-Sketch's predecessor also developed in our lab that supported the Marine Life Protection Act initiative to design a network of marine reserves here in California. And that, there are a range of papers on. Um, there's a one, I think, Matt Merrifield, is the lead author from 2013 on, on the marine map tool and then that's in a special issue with a bunch of other um, papers about the process. But then um, C, for C-Sketch we have a, a training manual where the, the what can walk you through a, a lot of um, how this works but there's a there's an initial chapter about thinking about process steps and how to use the tool at various process steps which I can share and then um, We've written kind of extensively on our blog about all of this. Um, so 
also whoever asked that question or others interested, please ping me and I can I can uh, point you to the right resources that are already online or send you uh, documents if if uh, you can't find them. Okay. And Nick just posted um, in the chat um, some of your blogs, great that are on open channels as well as some other materials on the open channels website uh, relevant to C-Sketch and uh, Marine Map. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Okay. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Nick. Okay. Um, let's see. Another question. Additionally, for the baseline information on habitat characteristics, spawning grounds, etc., how modifiable is this? Is there a is there a base information source that C-Sketch uses, or can the administrator create their base map information, such as reef location, seagrass, et cetera, uh, in, or can they put that, this into the C-Sketch program, then have it be viewable? Uh, and can C-Sketch be used to investigate local ecological knowledge of biodiversity information? Okay, so there's actually several questions there. But, yeah, I'm going to yeah. tackle it as maybe as two questions. Um, uh, is there is there a base um, set of data in my C-Sketch project when I start, and how customizable is that? Um, and then to um, look uh, traditional uh, uh, bringing in traditional ecological knowledge, I think was the second part. Yeah, yeah correct. Great. Right. Yep. Um, so first, so actually, your C-Sketch project will start out with a completely blank data layers tab, um, and often if I create a demo project, I pull in some. Um, global layers or some, um, if, if I know, especially here in California, I'll pull in some federal and state publicly available map services just as a demo. Um, but you'll populate that with the data that's relevant to the process. So whatever, um, whatever data you're, con you're bringing together for your process already. Um, those maps that I showed in Montserrat were, um, a lot of them, those are developed specifically for this process with a scientific assessment the Way Institute conducted two years ago, or yeah, year and a half ago. Um, and then I think uh, using C-Sketch to collect information and also visualize and, and evaluate traditional ecological knowledge um, alongside other biophysical and socioeconomic data is, um, it's totally feasible and an awesome way to use the tool. So through those spatial surveys, if you're interested in the data collection side, um, that's something that we've been involved with in a variety of contexts. And then also um, just C-Sketch provides so many opportunities to curate the data layers with descriptions um, and, and how you organize them and then how those data are analyzed in those um, the reports along alongside the sketching tools, those analytical reports. Um, that there's a lot of opportunity to communicate about uh, traditional knowledge along alongside other data sets you're evaluating. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Grace. Um, let's see. And moving on, let's see. Uh, can satellite imagery be uploaded to C-Sketch? Yes. That's easy. <laughs> Good. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and the, um, the, the Esri um, imagery and imagery with label space maps are in all the projects already, but especially for those those projects in the Caribbean, we've brought in um, an extra a specific satellite layer that's higher resolution for that for that island too. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, after identifying the quantitative and qualitative biodiversity of a proposed MPA, can you assess the dynamics of vulnerability for individual species as well as the cumulative impact um, and projected effect of resource use um, or nearby activities? Okay, let's see. so there's a little bit to parse out, but um, yeah, that's great. I can yeah, I can take that. Okay. Okay. Um, if you think you can do that, those things with the information you have in another analytical tool where you're, you're modeling cumulative impacts or you're evaluating um, the impacts to specific species, then yes, we can implement that in the C-Sketch project. And um, our geospatial developer has actually worked really um, closely on cumulative impacts modeling um, with Ben Halpern and NCS, and then implementing that that specific 
um, framework in C-Sketch projects in British Columbia um, and um, looking at a project to do it uh, in Sweden as well. So we have lots of experience designing um, with that analytical approach and um, can, can integrate it in C-Sketch. It just takes um, bringing the data together and, and probably on your end making a lot of the decisions about how to, how to analyze those um, properly. Okay, great, thank you. Um, let's see, is it possible to purchase a corporate license that covers multiple projects? Yes, we have um, pursued, we have designed a, a way to do that within the university licensing system to have like an enterprise license and you should reach out to me um, to talk about what that would look like specifically. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, and, and Grace, what is your email? What Grace dot Goldberg. That's uh, Goldberg with an E, not a U. Um, at UCSB dot edu. Okay. Sorry, it's on right. my first slide. <laughs> okay. Um, no problem. I'll, uh, we'll put it in the uh, the chat too. Okay. Okay, and yeah, it, yeah, it's up for folks to copy down. Okay, uh, after a project is completed, what are the options for archiving the results? That's a great question. So pretty much everything in C-Sketch can be exported from that administrative interface. You can do what we call the forum dump, which is downloading all of the content of all of the forums into a series of, um, a series of tables and zipped up um, geospatial files. We also have, um, and then throughout the tool, there are other ways of um, kind of exporting, like from the surveys or from um, um, like your own, maybe your own plans, exporting shapefiles um, and, and the associated attributes and other information. In terms of um, archiving data, we kind of assume that the what you've um, published into the data layers tab, you're also managing independently um, in the original form of that data as well. Um, so there's not like a download of the map services necessarily, but that you should have, to publish those map services, you already have those stored um, and archived. Okay, great. Um, and for everyone, I, I have two questions left, so uh, go ahead and send in any additional questions you have now. Okay, let's see. Um, are there any mobile applications? If not, will there be any in the future? Yeah. Um, we have talked about what parts of the C-Sketch tool would be useful to have on a mobile device, whether it's um, using a tablet rather than a laptop in the field, um, especially now um, that we have email integration. Oh, that's another new feature that I didn't talk about today because um, it's in my inbox. But when I get a C-Sketch email um, and I see that there's new data in a project, it's kind of tempting when I'm on my iPhone to, to click that link. Um, but a desktop or laptop computer is still the best place to sit down and um, sketch out ideas with, with really with a mouse and view all those analytics. So whoever asked that question, if you have a good idea for what would be really valuable in your project to have on a phone or on a tablet as just a piece of the C-Sketch project um, that you could use there, I'd love to chat more about it and get your input. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, let's see. Different types of information needs require different types of participation and types of collection approaches. Um, when you pay for the tool, are you locked into a specific research team approach or is the tool um, looser? Can you, is it more flexible? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, when you pay for the tool, you're not locked into a specific approach at all, actually. You can use, you can design the surveys however you like. You can choose to use discussion forums and surveys in some combination or one or neither. Um, you can uh, develop those sketching tools or asking people to sketch out their ideas for um, any number of different types of things. It, this really doesn't have to be about marine protected areas at all. Um, so just maybe that answers the question, but um, 
we're, we're kind of here partnering with folks that want to implement C-Sketch. Um, in the case of the Montserrat project, we're working with Sustainable Fisheries Group and the Weight Institute on the ocean zoning and the government of Montserrat on the ocean on their ocean zoning process. Um, and it's it's really more of the opposite relationship. Um, we, we get luck to you. Okay, fabulous. Um, and let's see, last question we have right now. Uh, is it possible to upload the data and program onto an internal server rather than the cloud to enhance data security? Oh, that's a good question. So um, we can't um, put the C-Sketch application itself on another server. Um, you know, this is being used with um, in, 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 for sensitive work um, by the federal, you know, this work isn't particularly sensitive, maybe that our federal government is doing, but they definitely have security concerns. And um, the way that we deal with it there is the, um, the data layers that are being visualized, especially those um, that are being locked down, can be on, um, on your own secure servers behind a firewall that you then are linking into C-Sketch um, and setting those privacy permissions in C-Sketch. So hopefully that's a, a satisfactory answer. Um, Okay, good. Well, Grace, uh, then we'll wrap up now. This was, this was, we had great question and answer. So uh, um, thank you so much for presenting today. And it's great to, we, we, we check in with uh, Grace and Will every couple of years, <laughs> see what the latest with C-Sketch is. And so it was great to find out about all the new features and new projects. Um, so thank you so much. And we look forward to having you on again again before too long <coughs> and thank you to everyone who was able to attend today we very much appreciate your participation and we uh, look forward to having you on a future webinar thanks okay. all okay bye everyone